Well, hi there, my name is Scott Duffy from GetCloudSkills.com and in this video, we're gonna talk specifically about the Azure Developer Certification. Now, many of you know that Azure has dozens of these role-based certifications for all the different roles across your organization. We're gonna talk about this developer certification. The formal name is Microsoft Certified Azure Developer Associate. And as you can see, it's an associate level certification. That means it's not a beginner certification, but it's not also at that expert level either. It's right down the middle. Now, many developers are going to wonder why they should get certified. And we'll talk about that in this video. And I'll tell you all the details about what you need to know, what you need to study, etc. Now, Microsoft has an official page on this. If you enter AZ-204, in your favorite search engine, this should be one of the top results. It's the official landing page at Microsoft Learn for the developer certification. And this is where you're gonna find out all of the details about the exam. I'll just give you the highlights here. The, in order to get certified, you just need to take and pass one exam, which is the AZ-204 exam. The price currently is 165 US dollars. They also charge the currency equivalent. So if you're in Europe, it'll be charged in euros. In Canada, it's in Canadian dollars, etc. Now these exams are good for 12 months and they need to be renewed annually. But don't worry, the renewal is free. The renewal is online. And generally it's going to be a lot easier than getting the initial certification. So that's an entirely separate process and I do have a video on YouTube talking about the renewal process. Uh, you can still take this exam online uh, or it, in person at an exam center using the person view. When you go to that landing page that we just talked about, you'll see this blue button called schedule exam that'll let you go through that process. Now the exam is also offered in many different languages. You can see on screen that we have over a dozen languages that you can take it. Obviously you're watching this video in English and the English is gonna be the most popular choice. But if you do prefer more comfortable in another language, uh, you might choose that as well. Now, who is it for? So it's an Azure developer certification. That means that you are generally working as a developer or in that developer space. If you're looking at the roles of development, it starts from re requirements gathering, you know, going to the various stakeholders and understanding what they need out of their applications, the design of those applications, development, deployment, security, maintaining those applications once it's deployed, performance tuning and monitoring. So this is what you should expect on this exam are questions, maybe not in every single one of those categories, but this is the scope of a developer's job and a scope on which Microsoft will ask questions about Microsoft Azure in these areas. Now, Microsoft recommends two years of programming experience uh, in general. So this is, you've been uh, in working as a professional programmer for a couple of years. In my personal experience, that's not necessarily required. There are plenty of students who've gotten this as well. And if you've got one year experience, it should, certainly shouldn't hold you back. Uh, what you're going to need to make up for if you don't have programming experience or directly experience with Microsoft Azure is studying and practicing. So you need to have experience with the Azure SDKs, as well as these command line tools like CLI, PowerShell, etc. So we're going to cover that in this video and go into more detail uh, in a course, for instance. Now, here are the overall objectives. So there are five major objectives of this exam, and you can see these basically cover uh, a lot of what we were just talking about in terms of development, deployment, security, monitoring. So the compute solutions, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, storage and security, those three make up the bulk of the exam, of course. We're also into monitoring and troubleshooting and optimization, which is performance tuning, which is 10 to 15%. And finally, connections between other services, Azure services, third-party services, uh, still a significant chunk at 20 to 25% of the exam. So that's a good overview of what Microsoft is going to be testing. Now I looked at the exam objectives and I pulled out all of the actual Azure services that were mentioned. And so we've got uh, Azure Container Registry, Container Instance, Container Apps, 
web apps, functions, the Cosmos DB as the database option, not SQL database, blob storage, Entra as the security option, Key Vault, uh, Azure Cache, the CDN, Application Insights, which briefly mentioned, API management, and then finally in messaging, you've got Event Grid, Event Hub, Service Bus, and Queue Storage. So those are the services, as you can see, it's quite a lot. So it is actually uh, 39 individual topics across 12 sub-objectives. We saw there were five top-level objectives, and underneath those five are a total of 12 sub-objectives that have those types of topics. So this is not the largest exam Microsoft offers for sure. Uh, is it something like AZ400 or even AZ104 offer uh, asks more, more individual topics across a broader scope, but uh, this is what the 204 exam covers. So the question then is how would you prepare for such an exam? Uh, I showed you a list of all of the services that are gonna be asked and so what we need here is hands-on experience. So I do recommend that you get yourself an Azure account, an Azure free account, or hopefully an account associated with your company that they'll let you uh, play with some Azure services for. So first thing I would do is I would say, why don't we start, you know, if you're an experienced developer, you just haven't worked too much with Azure, I would start by developing some apps. I would develop some apps that are designed to be deployed into containers. That's going to be, um, you know, deployed into a container, published to a registry, which is the directory service for containers, deployed into container instances and or container apps. You'll notice that AKS is not on this exam, so we don't have to get into those uh, Kubernetes services, but uh, these are the Microsoft offerings. Okay, so um, I would start by developing some apps that just use containers and get to know the process of working with containers in Azure. Now we can use those same apps, I guess, to deploy them through the web services pipeline. And so that includes um, obviously, obviously web services, scaling, logging, application insights, deployment slots. You can, you can really start to uh, secure these services, scale these services, and get to know this part of Azure as well. And so now we've covered uh, the two biggest compute options, and that's, we saw 20 to 25% of the exam. There is also talking about Azure functions on this exam. Um, personally, I wouldn't spend a lot of time creating function apps and getting too detailed with that. Create some functions and just get to know the, the types of functions you can create, the types of triggers, uh, the types of connectors with other Azure services and even um, orchestration and those types of functions where you can do some fancier things. When it comes to the backend, these apps can be extended so that they have a database component and you can actually uh, have Cosmos DB be the backend for your apps. Like we said, SQL database is not on this test. So this is a Cosmos DB test. You can also store your data as blobs in a blob storage container. Uh, that could be flus files, images, PDFs, generating files to store them into blob storage. Um, this can also work with your functions experiments as well. So understanding blob storage and how to work with it, how to organize it, life cycle, things like that. Now security is important in all modern uh, technology. And so Entra is Microsoft's preferred identity platform. It used to be called Azure AD. And so getting to know uh, Entra, hopefully you can, you can use your organization's tenant or create yourself a new tenant that you can play with, that you can uh, register your app in the app registration, use Entra as the login front end to your app instead of rolling your own login. If you can do that and get that successfully working, uh, you are well under the way of fulfilling this Entra knowledge. Uh, of course, Key Vault is the secret storing solution. So if you do need to store your keys, like the um, app access keys for your storage account, you can store them in a Key Vault and then use the Key Vault APIs to access those keys from your program instead of hard coding them. And if you can do that, 
that would go a long way in terms of fulfilling this knowledge requirement. Of course, Key Vault also works for certificates and things like that, but I don't think that's covered a lot on the exam. That's more of an infrastructure thing. Um, the content delivery network, the Azure CDN has changed a lot in the last couple of years. And so setting up a very simple front end to your static content like images, videos, JavaScript, CSS, set up a CDN to access that. That's a very simple change you can make. And then you would be covering basically understanding how CDN works, the benefits of it, the, the um, plans available, et cetera. Now, one of the biggest areas that probably um, a lot of people don't get exposed to and are gonna be on the test is API management. There's a lot of questions around setting up the um, rules in terms of input rules, of output rules, things like that using, I believe it's a, um, a JSON based rule set. Um, so basically understanding API management that is, that is certainly worth spending a few days on creating your very simple API that you can then put an API management front end in front of. It's basically a consolidation of front end for several APIs as well as a load balancer. It can be used to alter the input, alter the output and rules, security rules and things like that. I do have a course on this, I should mention, it would be unusual for me not to mention that I do have an AZ-204 course. Link is on screen. It's just sjd.ca slash AZ-204. Take you to my Udemy course on AZ-204. Uh, I've got over 150,000 students. So thank you very much to everyone who's enrolled. And I welcome you to join as well. Uh, you could always get this. Using this link is going to get you the maximum discount that I can offer. And so um, use the link to go and access my AZ-204 course, as well as you may not have access to either an Azure account to play with or a set of instructions uh, on a lot of these topics. So I have a set of AZ-204 practice labs. Remember, labs are a set of instructions or a challenge to you to go off and do something. So it may be to go and secure this web app and so there's a lab for that and you can either follow along in some of the labs or just be challenged and, and uh, asked to complete the lab without a lot of instruction. That's a real world type challenge. Uh, so I do re uh, also recommend this link, sjd.ca slash az204labs. Uh, this will take you to a different website in order for you to get uh, labs on this course. As you can see at the time that I published this 55 plus labs, uh, that you can practice with. It also comes with three months access um, to those labs and as well as an Azure account that you can use to specifically practice those labs. So you don't even need a account under your name or your company's account to be authorized. You can use my labs. And so many students uh, do that. Anyways, that's just a general um, little 10, 15 minute video talking about the uh, Azure sort of de developer certification. If you have questions, leave them in the comments of this YouTube channel. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for that. Anyways, if you guys have any questions or comments, you want me to make a video about Microsoft Azure or certification or any other topic, leave it in the comment and I'll, I'll get into my YouTube comments and I'll take people's requests from there. So thanks a lot. This has been Scott Duffy from Get Cloud Skills, and I hope you have a, an amazing day.